Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor and I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador. Now Sony have not asked me to make this video and they've not seen this video prior to me publishing it to YouTube. Now we're going to be taking a look at a rather interesting compact zoom lens in this video. Now this lens is not going to be of interest to all Sony Alpha photographers, but it is going to be of great interest to some Alpha photographers. And in this video we're going to work out who those photographers actually are. Now this particular lens follows in the line of two other significant lens releases in 2023. The first one was this uh, FE 20 to 70 f4g lens. Now it is of interest because it starts at the 20 mil angle of view. So this would allow some photographers who are wanting to travel very light maybe to leave their 20 mil f1.8 prime at home. The next significant lens was this 70 to 200 f4 macro g mark ii lens. Now this was also a multi-purpose lens in that uh, some photographers could perhaps choose to leave the macro lens at home. Now you're probably getting the idea now is we're trying to, uh, or Sony is maybe thinking of designing lenses for photographers who don't want to carry so many lenses. So let's take a look at Sony's new FE 24-50 f 2.8 g lens. Now it is significant in that it is very small. Now some people will be saying but it doesn't have enough zoom range and therefore it is of limited interest. But I'm going to show that in combination with the new high resolution alpha cameras it possibly is of greater value than you may first think. Now I'm not going to be putting forward opinions so much as in this video as showing you the photographic evidence of what this lens is capable of achieving. So although I'm a Sony Alpha ambassador, I'll let my images do the talking and seeing is believing. I will post a link to ultra high definition images on my Flickr Pro account so you can see the quality that I'm showcasing in this 4K video. Now I would encourage you to view this on a large 4K monitor if at all possible because you're only going to see how sharp this lens is by viewing it in 4K. So without much further ado, let's get started. So welcome to my FE2450 f2.8 G lens review. Now the best way I can describe this Sony lens is that it's a compact f2.8 zoom lens. It's for alpha photographers looking for the maximum image quality performance for the minimum size. So it's going to be attractive for Sony Alpha photographers who have been drawn to these more compact cameras, such as the new Alpha 7C cameras, the ZVE-1, and maybe even the APS-C 6700 camera. Now, to give you some measurements here, it's just a little under three inches wide and just a little over three and a half inches long. It just weighs in at just under a pound at 15.5 ounces or 440 grams, and it has the 67 millimeter filter thread. Now we can see the new lens over there on the left compared to what was a compact lens by Sony in 2023, which is their FE 2070 F4G. Now we've got a lot of Sony standard zoom lenses to choose from, and this one comes in at the third lightest. And of course, the significant point of difference for this light standard zoom is that it's an f 2.8 aperture. Now the first lightest uh, standard zoom in Sony's lens lineup is uh, the FE 2860 f4 to 5.6. That's a variable aperture and it stops down to 5.6 at perhaps just a little under 40 millimeters focal length. And uh, you've stuck with that 5.6 aperture all of the way up to that 60 mil maximum focal length. So we have a two stop disadvantage over the FE 2450 f2.8 g lens and this is obviously going to play out in the fact that our iso may be a little higher in low light four times higher let's not uh, kid ourselves here and we're, we're going to struggle to create uh, images with shallow depth of field unless we're close to the subject matter with a maximum aperture of 5.6 
Now the second lightest standard zoom from Sony that is still available in their lens lineup is the aging FE2470 f4 ZA. That ZA is because it's a Zeiss design lens. It's one of the original full frame E-mount lenses. It comes in at half an ounce lighter and it has that uh, one stop disadvantage in, in that it is an f4 maximum aperture, but it is a constant f4 maximum aperture. The third lightest of course goes to the FE2450 f2.8 G Master lens. Now this is uh, significantly different from that Zeiss design lens in that it has all of the bells and whistles and what I mean by that it has an AFMF switch absent from the Zeiss, custom button, aperture ring, D-click switch. It has a, an amazing 11 blade aperture so that's uh, similar to the G Master lenses. Compare that to the 9 blade aperture in the 2070 f4 G lens. We have fast AF and it is internal focusing. I wasn't thinking of going to mention that because pretty much all of Sony's standard zoom lenses have that internal focusing but it is perhaps uh, of interest if you're used to having uh, macro lenses which don't have that internal focusing. Now points of difference or uh, features that I want to call out is that it's small and light, it has a constant f2.8 aperture, it has a close focusing distance and it has linear AF motors. Now when Sony uh, gave me the spec sheet for this new lens uh, they didn't have the word linear XD focus motors, it just had linear AF motors. So I was keen to see how fast focusing this particular lens was. So of course I took it to a low triathlon event. This guy is exiting the water very close to me it has to be said because I'm working with a 50 mil focal length and then running past me on the beach and we can see uh, the point of um, the guy rising from the water at the greater distance and then as he races up the beach past me and pretty much all of those uh, water droplets you can see there ended up on me and the lens and so I should point out that the lens is weather sealed. These cyclists were acquired perhaps uh, several hundred meters down the road and this is at the uh, close focusing distance where I've got uh, pretty much pin sharp images. Now, I have to say not every sequence was pin sharp but there was enough pin sharp images at these faster focusing tests that I was running as you can see from this image. And again, a reminder, if you're not viewing this on a large 4K monitor, now's your chance to switch over to that because I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to see what this lens is absolutely capable of. And of course, what we're looking at is some very interesting smooth bokeh there uh, because of that 11 blade circular aperture. And uh, when I zoom into 100% magnification on my screen, you're gonna see, well, it's sharp and I don't have to say how sharp I'm sure if you're viewing it on that large screen uh, it's sort of a bit of a wow moment this is spectacularly sharp at a hundred percent magnification and this is not just one lucky shot uh, pretty much all of the portraits and I was shooting several hundred portraits over this test period uh, I have that equally impressive sharpness those uh, eyelashes are beautifully beautifully sharp as are the eyebrows there as well now let's zoom out to 24 millimeters now this is where some lenses can let you down in the sharp mistakes in the corner at maximum aperture so let's choose that maximum aperture Let's go right out into the top right hand corner and zoom to 100% magnification. And I want you to look at uh, somebody who's been writing perhaps with a Sharpie pen on the bricks in the uh, top right hand corner. And you'd have to say it's with a Sharpie pen and indeed it is very sharp. So that lens is definitely performing wide open in the corners at the 24 mil focal length. Now I should point out that uh, I don't shoot a lot of my portraits at 24 mil focal length, but it is possible with that f2.8 aperture to get figure ground separation when doing these head and shoulder portraits. And choosing that 24 mil angle of view, we are getting a little bit more of the background. I've gone at a little bit of an angle here to show the, uh, the perspective that we can get from that 24 mil focal length. 
now I'm basically uh, front on. This is a guy called Matt that I met in the alleyways. Now with 50 mil maximum aperture f2.8 and we're getting significant figure ground separation and Matt is very close to that wall so you can see how uh, little depth of field there actually is at maximum aperture at that 50 mil focal length. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit to that 35. This is actually 32 mil uh, angle of view here. And we're getting uh, perhaps enough figure ground separation at f2.8. So we're getting uh, good figure ground separation on these full length uh, figures here. Let's um, go in at that 50 mil. And this is obviously where we're going to get that liquid smooth bokeh. And one of the things that I like doing when we've got this shallow depth of field is putting foreground subjects out of focus as well as the background subjects so I like to sort of just edge in into a front uh, subject there so I'm shooting over a shoulder and we get this beautiful uh, uh, portrait there so this is not a featherweight lens uh, I have to say but it's a nicely balanced lens and of course it is a it is a bit of a featherweight compared to maybe the G master lenses that you might be a fan of for the larger full-frame cameras but I'm pretty much going to showcase this uh, small compact suit on the compact cameras that uh, Sony were releasing last year. And I have to say that the lens is quite comfortable holding single-handed uh, without uh, offering additional support underneath the weight of the lens. Now, the balance of that lens is around about the focus hold button there. So that's, uh, I think, is around about the fulcrum point. But it does allow, with a compact camera, just to hold this camera at arm's length and get some nice grabbed uh, shots. Now, there's a couple of two time zooms around that you may be looking at. Uh, this is obviously the Sony 2450 alongside Tamron's 2040 f2.8. Now, these are going to be of interest to the, um, the compact camera users, Alpha 7C, C2, Alpha 7C R cameras, and maybe also the ZVE1 as well. Now that uh, nice form factor, if you like, is great for shooting maybe from the monitor at maybe waist high, just taking some grab shots uh, without having to compose too carefully. And that weight isn't never going to feel too heavy, even though you're holding the camera lens combination in just one hand. I like the fact that Sony have been downsizing their zooms. Even the FE2470 uh, G Master Mark II was significantly smaller and lighter than the Mark I version. But if that was too heavy for users of the compact Sony cameras, then we did get that um, FE2070 F4G early last year. Now, this was uh, significantly smaller and lighter than their 24105 F4. So we were bringing the size and weight down for these cameras. But of course, with this uh, 2450 f2.8, we've brought the size and weight down even further. This um, 2450 full frame lens is actually smaller and lighter, and uh, I have to say uh, cheaper in some countries than Sony's premium APS-C uh, standard zoom lens you can see there on the left. Now, if we compare this to the 2070 F4G, which is on the right there, you can see that we've come down a filter size. This is significantly smaller in the diameter, and we are acquiring that uh, popular 67 millimeter filter thread, which I'm a big fan of because I've got several lenses with this uh, 67 millimeter filter thread. So just one set of filters for many lenses. And um, people who may be in the market for this um, lens would possibly be eyeing up a 2870 from uh, some other companies, namely Sigma on the left, uh, coming in at uh, just over one pound for that uh, 2870. And the Tamron 2875 f2.8 on the right, 1.2 pounds. So Sony's lens comes in a little bit lighter and smaller, as you can see there. And it does have that, uh, it starts with a wider angle of view. And I think that is probably going to be a deciding factor for some people. But we don't have the reach on the long end. 
First of all, before we start looking at some of the issues that you might think are an issue if you're wanting focal lengths longer than 50 mil, I'm going to do a little bit of cropping to show you. It may not be the bigger issue that you, you think it is if you're running with one of the new 33 megapixel or 60 megapixel sensors. So I've titled this uh, section four in the bag or one in the hand because owners of these compact Sony cameras are maybe looking at uh, these featherweight primes that we have here. Now this uh, new f2.8 zoom does cover all of the focal length from their FE24 f2.8G right through to their FE 50mm uh, f2.5G. Now very similar aperture on the zoom lens as to these four primes and you are getting lighter weight in the camera bag than owning these four prime lenses. In fact, if you just uh, own three of those prime lenses, then the zoom is still lighter. Now, some people will prefer a smaller, lighter form factor in the hand. Some will prefer the weight saving in the camera bag. Just to remind you, this zoom lens does cover the focal length of all of these prime lenses. These are the three G Master Prime lenses, the 24, 35, and 50. Now, these are perhaps are of more interest to the dual card slot alpha cameras, but I just wanted to compare the size with these. Now, again, this new zoom covers the focal length of all three of these G Masters, and it is a very similar sort of size and weight to those G Master Primes, and it also shares the same 6 67 millimeter filter thread. So this may be of interest to people who are recording movies and working with these camera lens combinations on gimbals. And of course, with that internal focusing, that will be of use. And I've not noticed any significant focus breathing, but of course the latest model cameras do have focus breathing compensation. Now, if I was going to add one more lens into the camera bag, I might add in a short tele such as Sony's cheap and very sharp 85mm FE 1.8. Now, I would possibly prefer to shoot with an 85 1.8 than having the 70mm on a zoom lens at f2.8. I think there's just a little bit more flexibility owning a 1.8 85mm portrait prime. So this is something that if you were thinking uh, you were missing out by having a zoom that stops at that 50mm focal length, that 85 is going to give you that uh, creative freedom by owning that second lens. And if you are packing a really featherweight camera bag, then you might also consider if some, you want something wider than the 24mm angle of view. One of the things that I've been doing on recent trips is packing an APS-C Sony lens, which is the E 11mm f1.8. It has a full frame equivalent angle of view of 16.5mm. Now I rarely crop my landscape shots because I want that steep perspective from a 16.5mm angle of view. So and if I'm shooting with something like the Alpha 7CR I'm still shooting with 26 megapixels so I don't really feel that I'm missing out but I am uh, getting a much lighter camera a bag. This section shows that if we aren't going to use that 85mm prime but we're looking to get a narrower angle of view then I would encourage photographers with the 33 and 60 megapixel sensors to explore shooting in APS-C mode or cropping more tightly in post-production to effectively get a little bit of extra zoom. And I think this uh, point is escapes people who have been used to shooting with the 24 megapixel sensors. So 24 to 50 or a 28 to 70. And I'm going to show that uh, 50 mil focal length isn't um, a restriction as much as you might think if we are prepared to crop a little in post or in camera for that matter. So here's the full frame from the 2450 at a Pride March that I was covering. And if I was to shoot in APS-C mode with that 1.5 crop, 
um, that obviously is going to zoom in and that's going to look like a 75 millimeter full frame equivalent angle of view so there's my portrait look if you like and the equivalent depth of field from that 2.8 aperture would be equivalent to an f4 zoom lens I, if I cropped even tighter, here's the 4K resolution. This is basically zooming to 100% magnification. You can see that we're getting a focal length equivalent to 100 millimeters. Now here's a 4K vertical crop from a 33 megapixel capture. And you can see that I'm getting that 100 millimeter full frame equivalent angle of view. And again, this is a 4K resolution. So we're not losing any quality, even if we're looking at it on a 4k monitor uh, turned into vertical orientation this is the flexibility of working with these higher resolution sensors let's take a look at a 24 millimeter capture from this combination you can see i'm getting a good environmental portrait now we can see the entire drum kit of this drummer but if i wanted more of a portrait of the drummer i could zoom to 50 mil i could move into aps-c crop mode or crop in uh, post-production to give me that 75 millimeter full frame equivalent angle of view and again that's a, an f4.2 full frame equivalent depth of field uh, when we're cropping uh, this tightly. Let's uh, return to that 24 millimeter capture. Now, if I was to crop in post-production or in camera, uh, I could actually extract an image, a 4K image that would fill the largest of 4K screens without any quality drop. When we're working with this premium glass, we're going to have lots of rich, sharp detail, even after cropping so tightly. So another example of that, I've done a vertical uh, capture of this uh, portrait in the alleyway in Melbourne. And then I've decided maybe I want a horizontal portrait instead. So I've got more than enough pixels to do that tight crop in post-production. Looking at that flexibility now, this athlete uh, emerging from the water was a little bit further away. So I'm getting a 100 millimeter full frame equivalent angle of view with that two times crop. And again, this will fill the screen and gives me that tight composition without any loss in quality. And as you can see from those droplets of water, we can see that we've got very good sharp detail, even though we've cropped so tightly. So this is actually an uncropped image, except uh, cropping into that 16:9 aspect ratio to fill your screens here. But this is a 50 mil zoom uh, without cropping. So I'm getting that shallow depth of field by getting in a little bit closer. And again, we can see that uh, beautiful fine detail from the splashing water. Now, one of the things that we can do with that 24 mil angle of view is we can get steep perspective okay and that steep perspective creates a certain drama that you wouldn't quite get if you were using a 28 mil focal length now the difference between 24 and 28 i think is more significant than the difference between 50 and 70 or 75 and uh, i'll just showcase that a few more times if i decided i wanted a, a tighter uh, crop on this right than an environmental portrait again i've um, even with the 33 megapixel sensors i do have the luxury of cropping much tighter as we can see in this example here now i perhaps would choose a 2450 over uh, maybe a 2870 or 2875 because i can crop to get a narrower angle of view but i cannot crop wider so i think the 2450 will appeal to more photographers than maybe the 2870 or 2875 but that's for you to make up your own uh, decision on that one Let's take a look at one of the capabilities of this new lens in that it has good close focus capabilities. Now this is important when I'm out and about shooting events that I often go in very tight to shoot detail. This is a tattoo on the arm of somebody on, on a march that I was uh, covering. And one of the interesting things about this uh, 2450, it has a very close, close focusing distance. 
at the 24 mil angle of view we've got a 7.5 inches from the subject to the sensor as the closest focusing distance now that might uh, be only two inches from the front of the lens element so we're looking at two inches at 24 millimeters from your subject to the front lens, lens element or 6.3 inches if you're zoomed to the 50 mil focal length now this small two inch high mickey mouse i use in several of my tests for close focusing distance there's a ruler put alongside mickey mouse showing he's just two inches high if we put uh, mickey in front of an e-mount this is actually a lens extension with an e-mount we can see mickey mouse is pretty much the same size as an fe mount so that gives you an idea of the size and you can see from the main image of mickey mouse he pretty much uh, fills the frame of your 4k monitor that you might be viewing this video on Compare that to maybe some older Sony lenses or any other so um, lens that doesn't have a great close focusing distance. I'll just put in an example of the FE 85mm f1.8 and that's as close to Mickey Mouse as we can get with that particular lens. So I'm showing you uh, how impressive uh, some of Sony's latest lenses are at getting up close and personal to small details. And remember this is not a macro lens, this is just a lens with good close Close focusing capability. If we drop into APS-C mode, then uh, Mickey will more than fill your frame. And so, a subject that is two inches high, you can basically have full bleed off the height and bottom edge of your frame. Here is a list of the uh, Sony lenses with good close-up capabilities and the new uh, FE2450 f2.8 G comes in the third best with a, a non macro lens obviously we've got um, the three uh, macro dedicated lenses up the top and uh, this uh, new lens is only bettered by the fe 100 400 uh, g master lens and the 2070 f4 g with its 0.39 times magnification ratio and actually the magnification ratio figure in that last column there on the right is a more significant bit of information than actually the close focusing distance so uh, 1 1 is usually the best magnification ratio for macro lenses the macro g2 7200 has a 0.5 and achieves full macro with the use of teleconverters let's take a look at uh, maybe just going out and covering events with just one lens so this is interesting uh, that I'm feeling brave enough to take this 2450 and cover some events without having to maybe reach for a really wide lens or a telephoto lens. So I'm walking backwards at um, close uh, distance to somebody uh, marching down the street here, showing the figure ground separation of the person in front of me. And of course, reliable focus tracking as I'm walking backwards. Now I'm getting in closer again with the 50 mil focal length at a sporting event. This is one of the things that you can always do to uh, avoid the need for a 70 or 85 mil focal length is just step one step closer to your subject matter. And this is uh, pretty much an uncropped image from this uh, young man exiting the water at a recent triathlon event. Getting up uh, for a uh, head and shoulders portrait this time of a dog in a motor car, uh, showing the uh, beautiful bokeh that we can achieve with this uh, camera. Moving into a street type setting now, maybe going a little bit wider to get some of the surrounding street information in. I'm also stopping the aperture down to 6.3 to get the wall as sharp as the figure there. Now, going a little bit wider again, this uh, guy in the triathlon event is running very close to me. This show also shows the fast focusing capability of a lens because lenses are going to have to work much harder when your subject is moving at very close range. And this guy is perhaps only one or two steps away from me as he passes half length portrait, uh, pin sharp with his 38 mil focal length. Um, again, in that mid zoom range, getting uh, more of the action this time figure and again a little bit of figure ground separation at the maximum f 2.8 aperture there 
Now again, I tend to shoot more portraits at the longer focal length, so, but this one is using that mid range, 35mm focal length, and we are getting a little bit of steep perspective. So I came in at a three quarter angle and shot her down the street to get the steeper perspective than I would have got with maybe a 50mm focal length or maybe even a portrait prime focal length. So again, you just have to step uh, one step closer to uh, get these uh, uh, head and shoulder portraits with that uh, 50 mil focal length. So here's a 28 mil focal length now getting um, the motor car and uh, multiple people in the portraits. Again, moving straight this time with 24 mil focal length because I want more of that uh, graffiti and a little bit of that uh, steeper perspective on these walls as it backs into that doorway. Again, going for a street type um, three quarter angle. So we look down the street to get that steeper perspective of that 24 mil angle of view. Again, that 24 mil wide angle of view is very good because this time I poked the camera into a motor car and got um, both of the guys um, sharp in this particular shot. Stopping down to F11, so I've got both people sharp. Obviously the ISO has climbed to 8000, so I've run this one through Lightroom's denoise and we get a beautiful fine detail, even though I've run a denoise uh, um, algorithm over that image. Of course, the 20 mil focal length is uh, gonna be of great use if you've got um, crowd portraits to do. So I used to do a little bit of work for Adobe, so they encouraged me to do their group portraits as I met them at this particular event here. And of course we can always go in and take off an individual portrait with that beautiful 50 mil angle of view maximum aperture to get that shallow depth of field and did i tell you how sharp this lens is well something to shout about i really think uh, again uh, fake eyelashes this time but uh, you can see if you're looking at this on a big screen you can see just how sharp this lens is and so this lens is going to be appealing for people who are wanting a small compact zoom lens that is pin sharp across the zoom range corner to corner that you're going to get from this particular example. Would you choose the 2450 2.8 over the 2070 f4g? That's a difficult question. I have to say, I was close to calling the um, the 2070 f4G as my lens of the year for 2023. But now, because of my love of lightweight camera bags and lightweight lenses, I would now seriously consider adding this 2450 2.8 to my camera bag. And I would possibly add in that 85mm prime to get my longer short telly and maybe uh, also pack in the E 1.8 11mm for those instances where I need to go a lot wider than 24mm. So if you're looking at that choice between those three again, um, Personally, I know I'm a Sony Alpha Ambassador, but again, uh, I hope that um, the evidence is what I've shown in this uh, video tutorial is my choice would go for the 2450. Now I do own some non-Sony lenses. I do own like, for instance, three Sigma lenses, but in this instance, uh, this one, this Sony is definitely a keeper in my opinion. Now, if you're looking for more support, um, I do offer a, a Patreon support channel, patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor. I have 500 and 600 page eBooks for late model alpha camera. I have Q&A forums for my Premium Plus members. I have member-only seminars, over 20 hours of uh, video seminars uh, covering a range of topics. I also um, provide my patrons with raw files from my camera and lens reviews, plus camera setup files. Those uh, files will set your camera up uh, as outlined in the 500 and 600 page ebooks. And as I said, I've covered uh, all uh, late model Alpha cameras from the Alpha 7.3 right through to the new Alpha 9 III cameras. 
So I uh, hope to, you can join up with uh, me to maybe watch these seminars. There are no contracts or commitments by signing up for one month. You can uh, unsign at any time and you will only be in for that one month, uh, 10 US dollar payment. Okay, hopefully you found this uh, FE2450 F2.8G lens review useful. Give me the thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you online next time.